business is not an easy business. It is not a forgiving business, and oftentimes there is much more heartache in it, much more frustration than there is success. And so I think it's important that we celebrate those successes when they do come. Well, hello and happy Thanksgiving! Welcome to another episode of Why I'll Never Make It, featuring insights into the realities of a career in the entertainment industry. I'm your host, Patrick Oliver Jones, and to find out more about Why I'll Never Make It or Win Me for short, go to the website WinMePodcast.com. Well, we're in the midst of holiday season. Halloween was a month ago, now it's Thanksgiving, Christmas is a month from now. So this holiday often kind of gets, it kind of gets squeezed in the middle of those two big holidays. One you get to dress up and have fun with, the other you get to give out presents. Thanksgiving, well, you get to have a great turkey. I mean, you know, there's something to be said for that. But as the name implies, it's all about giving thanks. And today's episode, I have five things that we can all be thankful for. And I'm going to be going over those in just a moment. But first, I want to give my thanks to you. Every week, you come, you listen, you enjoy, hopefully, you uh, you take part in this podcast by listening, by downloading, streaming, and being a part of the WinMe community each week and every episode. And there's a few of you that I want to point out in particular. Big thanks goes out to Taylor, Susie, Judy, Robin, Carly, George, and DB. These seven individuals all filled out the survey that was uh, at the end of season two, and your insights really gave me a springboard with which to start season three, things that I needed to improve upon, things that were great and needed to continue, giving me feedback on ideas that I had for upcoming episodes and, and upcoming seasons as Why I'll Never Make It continues to grow and become even better. So I really want to thank the seven of you in particular for sharing your thoughts, and giving your feedback. Two of those in particular, Carly and Robin. Now, Carly was the first person to ever reach out to me specifically with a question about moving to New York and about her own work as an artist. And we had several emails back and forth that were that were really great and getting to uh, getting to know her and kind of sharing my own insights and, and helping her in any way that I could. And so it was really great to get to connect with her in that way. And Robin is someone who was the first person to ever actually donate to the podcast. And so I can't thank Robin enough, I was deeply humbled and surprised and grateful for her support of this podcast. And it's been such a uh, motivation to make sure that every episode is worth her donation and support. And that's what I try to do each and every week. I know you're out there. I know you're listening. And I know that you want a great episode, that you want great insights. And my aim is that the guests I bring on give you a little something extra that you don't find anywhere else. Because believe me, there are literally hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there. And so the fact that you are listening to me now, when you have all those other options, is I'm, there aren't words enough to say how grateful I am that you've chosen why I'll never make it and myself to spend your time with. And so whether or not I make it as the creative artist that I am, I've certainly made it as a podcaster because of listeners like you. And now I want to share with you five reasons why we as artists should be thankful. As I mentioned before, this is a tough business and it can chew you up and spit you out if you're not (laughs) ready for it and if you're not tough enough to, to keep going no matter what. And so it's important, especially in a time like this, we're coming near the end of the year, to take stock of what we've done, what we haven't done, and be thankful for those opportunities that have come our way. Number one, be thankful for your talent. 
Now, I know this may sound egotistical, but I think it's important that we recognize what we bring to the table, that we recognize the talent that is within us, both realized as well as potential. The realized is the talent that people see, the talent that gets us cast, the talent that moves us forward in this industry. The potential talent is the one that we're still growing with, this one that we still train and take classes for, the one that we do a small project so that it can lead to a bigger project. Both of those talents together comprise who we are as an artist. This talent, this God-given talent, this natural talent that is within us is what has propelled us this far. And as long as we keep maintaining it and growing it, then it's only going to take us farther. And we have to start with ourselves because this is a very personal, a very vulnerable art form that we have chosen, the performing arts. And it's important that we are sure of who we are as artists. Number two may sound general and obvious, but the internet has changed our lives, and particularly for us as artists. I mean, just think about YouTube, and there are people that are found every day from either uh, a vlog that they're doing, or they put themselves on tape dancing, singing, playing an instrument, some showcase of their talent. People create so much content on YouTube, as well as the classes and instruction that you can take. I, every time that I have to do a new accent for an audition, I go to YouTube and I generally find exactly what I'm looking for, how to say something, how to phrase it, how to imitate that accent to the best of my ability. That's just one example of the many things that YouTube brings us. But connecting us via Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, I mean, Think about it. 15 years ago, none of this was around. Whenever you wanted to connect with someone, we had email, yeah, but basically you picked up a phone and you left a message. But now we can connect instantly with people around the world. And so the audience that we can bring our art to has grown exponentially just in the last 10 or 15 years. And we need to realize how wonderfully awesome it is that we can create content, put it out there, and receive feedback. Now, granted, there are the trolls out there that like to just stir up trouble, but you basically just have to ignore them. You have to push past all that, especially on Twitter. You just have to let that go. But there's so much good out there to be found, to be created, and it's a way for us to showcase that talent that I mentioned in reason number one. Now, reason number three could be possibly the most important of the reasons, and I've stuck it here in the middle because I think it really is an umbrella over all of them. And number three is the support of your family, friends, as well as your fans. Each of us have a family that we come from. Sometimes they were supportive, sometimes they weren't, but that family was the foundation upon which we built our lives. And for better or for worse, that's the person that we started out as. And then as we grow as an artist, as we continue to grow as a person, then we branched out into friends and created a network of supporters that love us, that love our work, and want us to continue to grow and do better. And without that support, then do we really have art? There is something to be said for doing art for yourself. There are plenty of people who paint and never show it to anyone, who write a poem, and it's very personal. I've, I've certainly did that. I wrote out my thoughts and feelings and heartbreaks onto the page, and 95% of it has never seen the light of day. But I think the true calling of an artist is to reach out, to tell a story, and the only way we can do that is if people watch, is if people take in what it is that we have to give. It's so wonderfully important to thank them, to be grateful for the ones who stick it out. I, I know that I've had terrible shows that were poorly written, poorly directed. I wasn't that great, but my mother was always there. Or I had friends that came and saw it, and they were like, way to go, you were up there. And I'm like, yes, I was, thank you. And then there are the projects that I was so proud of and so grateful that someone came and got to appreciate what it is that I love to do. And I know that you have people like that in your life. And this is a perfect time of year 
and reach out to them and really show your gratitude for all that they bring, not only to your life, but to your art. Number four is an offshoot of the friends and family, and that is the mentors, those that guide us, that influence us. And I know throughout my career, there have been directors, there have been music directors, as well as colleagues along the way that have given me a leg up, that have motivated me, that have pushed me, that have also just sat down with me, listened to me, and let me know, hey, you're going to get through this. It's going to be okay. Or gave me a swift kick in the pants and said, you can do this, and you don't need to sell yourself short. I've certainly needed both of those at different times stages in my life. And I'm sure that you have gone through a time where you weren't sure you could do it. And it's those mentors, those people in our lives that have been there before us, that know the heartache and the hardships that we all go through and are there to be basically a cornerstone of our own career, a foundation, if you will, for us to build upon them. For me as an actor, directors tend to be that person that is first and foremost, the ones that can either make or break a show for me, not just in the way that they direct, but also in how they connect with me as an actor, as a collaborator in that particular project. And the best directors that I've ever worked with are those when I feel listened to, when I feel like my contribution is considered. Sometimes it's dismissed is because that's not what we're doing, or sometimes it's taken in and becomes a part of the show, becomes a part of the piece, the story that we're telling. To be understood, to be listened to is something that cannot be understated. And to have mentors and influences in your life that appreciate that and give that a voice is so important for us as artists. Now, doing it for the art, doing it for the passion is certainly very important. But number five, we have to be grateful for the money that we do make, no matter how little it is. There's a statistic that Equity has that 10% of its membership, which is actors and stage managers, at any one given time, only 10% of them are working. So 90% of their membership, they have no job, at least in the arts, under an Equity contract. And so making a lot of money is certainly nice to do in this business, but it is certainly not the norm, and it's certainly not something that can be counted on. And so whenever you do have that job that pays you, no matter how little it is, I've, I remember my very first job was $150 a week. And that, even back then, I won't say when that was, but even back then, that was not a lot of money. But uh, the fact that someone will invest in us financially by giving us a paycheck, whether it's just a stipend or whether it's a weekly salary, that is something to be treasured because most people in this industry aren't getting that. So it's one that we certainly need to be appreciative of. So in summary, all of these reasons come back to opportunity and being thankful for the opportunity to do our art, the opportunity to showcase that art to people who love and support us, the opportunity to make money through our art. It all comes down to opportunities. And if you're ever feeling stuck, if you're ever feeling like your career, your opportunities have dried up, I know for myself, I feel that way often, especially when I'm in New York and it's been months between jobs and I don't know when the next one's coming. It's all about the opportunities. And so when you feel stagnant and like you're not going anywhere, that is a perfect time and it is actually the best time to realize where you used to be, where you still want to go, and how you can keep going to get there. The act of thankfulness and of gratitude is not something to be underestimated. Approaching each audition, approaching each performance, approaching each project that you work on with a sense of gratitude for that moment, that opportunity that you have, will not only lift your spirit, but it will also lift your art form as you continue to work and grow with each passing week, month, and year in this industry.
Well, that just about does it for me. Stay tuned next week when I bring on a good friend of mine, Jenny Stafford, who is a writer and a lyricist that I've had the pleasure of working with. She'll give her insights on the other side of the table. In fact, on the other side of the script, when it's just being written, all those words are coming together and forming the story that we as actors get to tell. She has a lot of great insights to share with us, and you don't want to miss my conversation with her next week. As always, you can keep up with me and the podcast. Look in the show notes for a link to the website and ways that you can support and contribute to this podcast. Well, this is me, Patrick Oliver Jones, signing off to you for yet another episode and reminding you that the reasons for not making it may be countless and frustrating, but the reasons to keep going and be thankful are even more numerous and rewarding. Let's get together again next week as we talk more about why I'll never make it.